David and myself are on Mountain Time, okay, and it on. is Thank time, you. so we can go ahead and get started. Thank you so much. As you join, just please drop into the chat um, where you're joining us from today and your role, so we can learn a little bit more about you. I know we have quite a few people that will be joining us today. Uh, so today, we're, uh, David's going to be presenting on how to use a universal screener for number sense in your classrooms. This is meant to be a very quick overview of these assessments so that you'll have all the essential information to use these in your classrooms or to support teachers, as it may be, that are using these in the classrooms. A couple of housekeeping things as we get started here. Oh, sorry. David, you're driving the, yep. the yep. presentation yep. today. Sorry, I got caught up in the chats. <laughs> Um, so the session today will be recorded. I do want to just share that if you are sharing uh, information in the chat that will be made available for all of the uh, people who were not able to join us today, maybe they're working in the classroom today, and will be watching this on demand. Uh, so you may share questions and, and observations. There are some kind of prompts too that David will be asking for your participation. So please do drop that into chat. If you do have a question uh, for David Woodward or for myself, please use a Q&A tool at the bottom of your screen. I have an image there. Um, we'll be answering that throughout the presentation also. All right, without further ado. Without further ado, uh, I have the pleasure of presenting uh, David Woodward today. David Woodward is wearing only one hat today, which is unusual, as lead author of the Universal Screener for Number Sense project. Um, so uh, as a lead author, working on that on the initial iteration back in 2008, uh, you're in very great hands today to learn about how to use these in classrooms he supported many districts in Colorado and, and uh, across the US for implementing these assessments also. And you'll recognize him in some of the interviews too that he's sharing. David has three decades of experience in, in education um, from a Montessori preschool classroom teacher all the way to elementary math specialist at Boulder Valley School District in Colorado, um, where he led the authoring team for these screeners. So you're in very great hands and I'll be monitoring chat here and answering pet questions and uh, monitoring the Q&A. So if you have any questions, feel free to jump th drop those in and I'll be answering those throughout the presentation. Great, thank you very much, Tamara. I'm just, uh, um, so yeah, I'm gonna kind of go through the contents of this quickly because we do only have a half an hour here and probably your questions um, are, are some of the most important part of the content. So I'm going to try and make sure that I wrap up a little bit uh, before the um, bottom of the hour here. You know, the test taking experience is what we're going to focus on here at the very beginning of this thing, thinking about, okay, students' normal expectations of a math assessment, um, perhaps your own personal um, experiences with math assessments, either through, you know, taking them yourselves or giving them in your classrooms, are not generally thought of as being the most pleasant experiences of school. Um, and, you know, I don't know, I don't think that it has to be that way. I know that it doesn't have to be that way. And, and really, you know, the, 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 the universal screeners for number sense are really designed to be uh, a different way of thinking about how we can understand what students know and what they can do and, and then therefore learn how to serve our students better. So um, I'm going to go ahead and start off right away with a video here. Um, so uh, it says here in the prompt, we want you to think about what's being communicated between the teacher and the student. Um, and I'm going to click the Let's Watch video um, uh, link here in just a second. But I want to put out one more thing. In about halfway through this interview, there is a question related to subtraction that you're going to see. Um, it's an eight minus two subtraction problem. And I want you to kind of focus on that one and think about, because I'm going to ask you to put some things in the chat about you, what you learn about that child um, through that question in particular, because I think that that's an interesting one. So, so kind of watch out for the subtraction problem as we go through. And um, hopefully the sound will work well. All right. So what I want to start with is just the counting. Let me hear you count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. Okay, let's let's try it one more time. I want you to try one more time. I want you to kind of do just a little bit slower and a little bit louder. Can you do that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. All right, perfect. Okay, one more count. 
This time start at the number 38. Start at 38. 39, 40, 41, 42, 43. Awesome. Let me hear you count by tens. 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Nicely done. Okay. We're going to read some numbers. You ready? Mm -hmm. What number do I have here? Eight. Okay. And now. This is for kids that are going into first grade, that's right. I'm in first grade. I'm going into first grade. I know. That's why you're doing this one. That one. So, how many counters are there all together? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay. Right here, I got four counters. I'm going to cover those up, all right? Over here, I have three blue ones. I'm going to put those with the four. How many counters are there? Five. Okay. We know. Six, I think. Not sure. How many did I put at first? Four. Four. And then how many more? Seven. Ah, okay. They're All still right. under here. They're still under there. That's right. Okay. We have seven counters, you think? All right. Mm -hmm. So now, what Nine. am I going to do? I am correct. You think so? Okay. <laughs> All right. Now I've got eight counters there, okay? How many are there? Eight. There are eight counters there. What I'm going to do is take two of them back out. How many counters are still under there? Um, seven? Six. Okay, seven. which one is it? Six, seven. Seven or six? Seven. Seven? How do you know seven? Because I'm a smart man. <laughs> I am. I know you're a smart man. But let me think about it. There were, we had, we had eight, right? Wait, six. I mean. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just choosing bulls. <laughs> okay. Well, you see if you can figure it out so that you're really certain. Uh, I don't know. I saw you doing some thinking there. What were you, so let's let's do it one more time from the beginning. Okay. You got eight counters. Eight. Right. And now I'm gonna take two of them back out. Two plus I have no idea. Take one. It is six. <laughs> I think it's seven. Six. You seven, think it's six. seven, 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 seven. Alright, alright. Seven. Okay, we're gonna move on. Alright. Now I've got some bears. How many bears are there? One, two, three, four, five. They look like elephants. They One, two, three, four, five, six. I guess yeah, they look like an elephant. That there, are, there are, how many are there? Count them carefully. Five. Five bears. Okay, there's five bears there. Some of them are hiding. How many, right? Mm -hmm. There's one there. How many are hiding? So how many bears are there? Five. Five, okay. And now, some of them are hiding. Two. One. Two. Three. How many do you see? Three. Okay, so how many are hiding? Two. Okay. All right. Now here. There's some counters. Ten dots. Ten. Right. Now, I have three more. How many are there all together? Thirteen. What'd you say? Thirteen. Okay. How did you know that was thirteen? Because ten plus three. Like, have you not heard of this? There's a legend <laughs> about this. There's a legend? Well, let me hear the legend. It's about um, when ten is divided with three. Those is like in the 1920s, I think. In the 1920s? Okay. And, um, like, they even thought 
10 plus 8 is 13, but um, one of the guys actually said, it's not 13. Eight, 10 plus 8 is not 13. It's 3 plus 10. 10 plus 3. That's a really wonderful legend. I <laughs> made it up. <laughs> I made it up. <laughs> I kind of got the feeling that you did. All right. So, uh, you know, we've got we got an interesting video here with a with a very entertaining child. If you could put just into your into the just a few words, um, something about that subtraction task in particular, um, the eight takeaway two that you that you learned from this child about that, that would be great. Yeah. He knows the answer is smaller. Excellent one. I'm just going to read some of these out. Right. He knows that, that it's a takeaway type question. He knows he's, he's, he's on to the idea, but it's not yet secure. That's awesome. And uh, Katrina noticed that he saw it as an adding up problem as well. Two and something more that I don't know, he says, um, is, is going to give me eight. So so in this in this question in particular, I want to think about the the understanding of the child as in terms of subtraction and his conceptual understanding, we have learned a ton about this child. Now, if we'd have given him this paper on pencil and paper, no way we would have learned nearly as much about him and his understanding of subtraction in, in a common, normal kind of, 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 of assessment setting. And this is why I feel like these, these interview assessments are so important. Um, besides the fact that you simply cannot um, assess whether a child knows their forward number word sequence, backward number word sequence, numeral um, ability to read numerals, all these other things that need to be assessed verbally um, in, in a mental math thing. You just learn so much about kids and their conceptual development as well as their um, uh, entertaining <laughs> value, right? I mean, so we get we get not only do we find out that a lot about the student's mathematics ability through this assessment, we learn about who he is as a kid. And I'm going to come back to that point also. So, um, you know, we just, the the entire purpose, and I, I wish that I could say that I think that this is the purpose of every assessment, but definitely the United, the, uh, the Universal Screeners for Number Sets are intended to provide helpful, actionable information for teachers and families, that it's not just assessment for um, monitoring progress, that it's not just assessment for um, some kind of compliance that needs to be done, but that we are really focusing on helpful, meaningful, actionable information for teachers and families. Um, that's why these assessments exist. So um, I'm just going to now go through a, a little bit of overview of the assessments. Um, and I see some questions coming in. Thank you. Continue to put those there. I am going to try and go through the slides quickly so that I can answer questions at the end. Um, and so there's a, um, a lot of good questions that are coming through. I see some of them coming through in chat as well. If you got a good question that you want to put into the uh, Q&A one, we're really going to prioritize those. So overview. Um, so the assessments, there are three iterations of the assessment um, every year from kindergarten through sixth grade, uh, fall, mid-year, and spring, we call them. The fall screeners are entirely interview-based. The mid-year and spring screeners are hybrid in that they have both an interview and they have written portions. So in order to increase the efficiency of the assessment and in order to be a little bit more comprehensive in our assessment, there's a written portion that complements the interviews in each of the spring um, uh, mid-year and spring screeners. Um, so that's that's kind of the format of these things. And in each assessment, they, you'll find that there is a, a note catcher. Um, this is just intended to be some place where you can gather your notes about what the student's done and then kind of quickly score that thing so that you can refer back to a single page. Um, there's a quick script then that usually you want to have on the table next to your note catcher. So you've got your quick script there. And then, and then you can read the things off of there. And then finally, you'll just be able to use the notebook catcher. But I, but I recommend um, having that quick script there. And then the detailed rubric, which probably should have come first, because I really, 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 really encourage people to read the detailed rubric first. People oftentimes make assumptions on things on the way that things are scored is my experience in working with teachers um, on learning how to do these things. So they'll be like, yeah, I'm going to give the kid a two because they were really slow on that one. 
well, it's not a, it's not a time to test. And, and, and in some cases, yeah, maybe the fluency of the answer actually is important, but in many cases, it is, it is not. We're looking for the strategies that the, te the students employ. We're looking for the ways that they solve problems. We're trying to understand their number sense development, um, not, not just that. And so therefore, really try to P please pay attention to the detailed rubrics that will explain the scoring for each of the different um, behaviors that you see. The entire PDF is available on the, uh, the Forefront um, website at the USNS project page. Um, you'll see that um, on, our, on our website, look for solutions at the top, and you'll see that there's a link to that, and it's free download for everyone everywhere all the time. Uh, nuts and bolts. Interviews are done individually with students. Um, can't do these in a small group. You really do need to do all the interviews individually. Um, I would say actually to just clarify that four to seven minutes, really honestly at, at kindergarten, they're quite a bit shorter. They can be even two minutes long. They're very quick at kindergarten, two, three, four minutes. Whereas once you get to the older grades, um, it's rare that I can get through one in five minutes. I would say really that they stretch out to five to eight minutes at the upper grades, um, just because the ideas become much more complex and the student needs more time to think and you know, counting all that other stuff. So, so um, just so you know that that's a little bit uh, four to seven is kind of the overall average, but it does vary from grade to grade. Written sections can be administered in small group or whole class, um, however you want to do that. The materials you need, photocopies, some cards that are cut out, those are all included in the um, the PDF, and then you'll need some simple counters and covers. Um, and you know, about ten minutes to set up is what we what we average on on this, I think. Um, they are available in both English and Spanish, um, and the, the design of the assessments um, is, is nice in that it does make it particularly accessible for students, um, but we do have a, an accommodations guide that we added in this year into the, um, the document, the full PDF, so that's new. If you haven't gotten the download this year, um, you might want to get it for that accommodations document, and thank you to Joey Vaughn, who I see showed up here today because she did help with that, so thanks, Joey. Um, and asset-based assessment. So the um, the idea, okay, so assessment is a communication device, and we're trying to figure out what students know and understand, right? Asset-based assessment is really about really focusing on what students know and understand. What they What they need to learn is important, but knowing what they can do and what they do know is probably more important. Um, and the screeners are very good about being able to help teachers understand, like we saw in that first grade task there, all the understanding that that child has around subtraction that is not yet solid. And so therefore he's you know, gonna, assuming that his first answer is what he might've put on a paper and pencil assessment, a seven, we just have so much more information about what that child knows because we're able to interview him. Um, a question oftentimes comes up with this, you know, if I go through, let's say I'm doing the fourth grade assessment and the child scores at a level one across all the tasks, and you really didn't learn very much about what that child knows, I do recommend dropping back. And particularly at this time of year, I really do recommend dropping back a full grade level to the fall assessment from the prior grade as your starting point for um, assessing further and finding out um, what the kid knows and where uh, approximately where they're at. You can obviously drop back to the spring and mid-year assessments as well, but um, I, I, it's just the flow feels better for me to go back a full year and then um, kind of work from there, if you will. And uh, I do believe this is true. Asset-based assessment is equitable assessment in that we are trying to understand what students know and then build on their knowledge. Absolutely trying to put their knowledge at the forefront of the thing. And that's the idea. Beyond the math, obviously, we just learn a lot about students and the way that they think, the way that they we learn about their sense of humor sometimes. We learn about their nervousness. You can see those students who are rather anxious. You can see those students who just start guessing at questions without kind of thinking and pausing to understand the question. You can you can really, really see those students who do stop to pause and understand. Um, you know, I I we had a video that we collected years ago where where a kid really literally took about four minutes on one question as they came at it from four different angles. Obviously that's a little bit difficult for a screener, but oh my gosh, what we learned from that student in those four minutes of video was, was incredible. 
Um, and so you really you really learn about students and 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 on beyond just their ability to perform a paper pencil and get answers right or a computer based assessment where they're just getting things right and wrong. You, you learn about how to support that student, how to engage with that student, et cetera. So a um, little bit about Forefront and the uni universal screeners from, for a number of sense. So we've been really focusing on the USNS um, assessments the entire presentation. Forefront is a software platform that um, uh, we've developed to help manage um, assessment results from the screeners and from other assessments as well. With Forefront, when you when you go in and, and put your data into Forefront, um, you get obviously beautiful representations of that data to really understand uh, your groups of students, your whole school of students or district of students. You can see progress over time. You can see all kinds of wonderful things with the reports there. You can put those assessment data alongside other assessments that you have, other curricular assessments or broad scope assessments if you want to do correlations, et cetera. It's a super powerful platform for that. But in, you know, in particular, really focusing on that, that idea of how do we inform classroom practice and how do we improve parent communication. Through this, you also get um, the next steps documents. So for every one of the questions, um, there are next steps documents that have been built that will say, hey, you know, this, you've got groups of students or a small group of students or whatever who might not have been successful with um, question number seven in this case. Um, here are some ideas. Um, for a small group, 15 minutes, kind of supplemental ideas, extra games, other things that you might want to include in instruction. And then also then customized family letters for each of the students. So normally you'd say, dear family of whatever child that would have their name there, it would explain the assessment. It tells the parents, you know, what, what the child did well. It tells them here's where they could use some additional support and then gives them a, a set of ideas. Hey, try this, try this, try this. And here's some extra websites you might want to visit. So those are um, um, all available through Forefront in combination with the Universal Screeners for Number Sense. So any questions about that, you can um, reach out to us. So I'm going to just go ahead and um, put this slide up while we are um, answering some of these questions. Um, so uh, there's a, a link there, obviously, for joining the Number Sense Screener Facebook group. Uh, jot down that um, email address if you'd like to, um, or the, uh, the, the URL there for downloading. That's the first one. And then we obviously provide professional learning opportunities for you, um, uh, both on-demand stuff that we have through the website that's um, listed there. Or um, and you can also contact us about in-person stuff or, or personal stuff that you need. Um, so, without any further ado, Tamara, where should we start? Uh, okay. Well, there's a, a quite a few questions here, so we'll start with the first one uh, from Amy Smith. How was the content selected for the Universal Screeners for Number Sense? Okay, so that's a, a great question, um, and I could go on for quite a while. So. Um, a number of things uh, really influenced early on the writing of the thing. The primary and probably most important influence early on was the work of the Math Recovery Council. So if you're not familiar with the work of the U.S. Math Recovery Council, I really uh, recommend that you look into that. They um, provide a variety of professional development opportunities, as well as a set of assessments that are called the Advantage Math Assessments. And we had been trained in those, and those helped us to define kind of the categories of things, this idea of, of number words and numerals, um, addition and subtraction, the structuring number, et cetera. So you will see those areas of the assessment. There, there are call outs in each of those sections to the AVMR, Advantage Math Recovery Assessments. Um, and, and so if you're not using those, then that's fine. If you are using them, all the better. Um, those are, it's a fantastic program. So that was kind of the first influence. Beyond that, then there was, um, when, the, when we were writing these, actually it came out slightly after the first writing of the fall assessments, we had um, the Common Core come along and define for us um, certain areas. And so definitely there's, there's an influence of the Common Core in the assessments um, in terms of helping us to benchmark things to expectations for each of the grade levels. For instance, the expectation that kindergartners will be able to count forward to 100. Um, so obviously forward number word sequences being important, 
the Common Core then helped us to define the extent of the knowledge. And I'll just quickly then lastly, I would say that then there was a lot of, of research um, at the time around predictive ideas, and there still is even more now, predictive ideas in mathematics um, that, that help us to understand where students and the, the kind of alarm bells that had been proven through research. So you can look at those, you know, so for, for instance, forward number word sequence, the ability to read numerals, all of these things were already documented as being predictive of other measures within mathematics. And so we were kind of looking for those things that were most predictive and, and definitely included those in there, as well as everything else that we read about number sense and, and what, what is number sense and how do we define number sense, et cetera. So there's a lot of influences on the content itself. Great question. Awesome. Okay, we have another question from Lindsay Bailey. When scoring the screeners, why is it that sometimes they get a point even after they get the answer and thinking wrong? So rather than thinking of them as points, think of them as levels. So the child is at level one, level two, or a level three response. So think of them as a level one, level two, level three response. There, the, there's two reasons for that, um, that, that kind of one of them originally, honestly, came out because we wanted it to align with standards-based report cards. We don't give children zeros on standards-based report cards. We give them one, two, three, or four, at least in the districts that I've worked with. And so, and so it was sort of to say, okay, this child is at that level, right? On the, the, the second follow-up to that is to say, no one is at zero. Now you'll find that there are some, actually, we do include a level zero in the mid-year and, and, and spring screeners for some of the questions. But really what we're saying is that this child has something that they're starting with and we need to look for it. So that's kind of just a kind of a messaging thing, not so much... Um, uh, uh, the the thing, if we could have done zero, one, two, for all that matters, right? But we decided to do one, two, three, because it's level one, level two, level three. Thank you. Uh, this is a question we get a lot, actually. I've seen it too this week in our Facebook group. So uh, this is from Joey Vaughn. If we drop back a grade level in the fall, should we start with the middle of year assessment at that lower grade level in December, January? Okay, so in the fall, in the fall, I like to just drop back to the fall of the prior year. It feels like the sequence is better. Sometimes I even follow up immediately right there. If I've got a couple of grade levels of assessments right there on the table, the materials, there's a lot of overlap. It just can kind of flow through seamlessly. Um, so that's that's what I prefer to do. You obviously, there, I know of other people and, and other people have told me that they've done this and it makes total sense as well, honestly, is they drop back to the fall assessment of the prior year. It's going to be assessing very similar content in terms of expectations because so so the, the fall assessments from each year align with the end of year expectations from the prior year. So so the fall screener from third grade, for instance, and aligns with end of year content expectations from second grade. So it will give you another lens, if you will, if you drop back to that spring screener from the prior grade level, it will give you another lens for understanding that, that current performance. So if the child was close on a couple of questions in particular, that would be really helpful. If the child just comes straight through at a ones, then that's when I recommend going back a full grade level. Now, if there are ones in certain areas where you feel like you need to dig down deeper, let's just say numerals and words, right? Number word sequences right? Then you might want to just even di just dig down to that one section from, from two years ago or whatever to, to get to that starting point. So we're really trying to look for the starting points for instruction for each of the kids. And so drop back as far as makes sense. Uh, and the last question we have here today uh, is, does Forefront provide individual family letters for bridges assessments too? Yeah, good question. Thank you very much for that, Julie. So yes, we do provide um, family letters for um, all of the Bridges assessments, as well as for the illustrative mathematics assessments as well. So those are auto-generated family letters that are for, for each of those programs and, um, and ready to go for um, people implementing those. For other programs that we don't have pre-configured family letters, we do actually provide the functionality to our premium clients to be able to create their own um, family letters that will be auto-generated by the system. So if you have the capacity in your district to do that and are interested in that, then, then we provide that opportunity as well. There was one more question in the chat. I'm gonna grab real quick because I got one minute. Was there a reason that the tokens are covered? Yes, absolutely. So you want to cover those tokens because you don't, you want to see if they can solve the problem without counting it. 
right? If if we provide them the opportunity to count everything all the time, they will. A lot of students will. So we want to force the idea of in making those numbers not directly perceivable to see if the student is able to solve them in spite of them not being visible. So definitely want to get those covered as you're giving the assessments. So um, we're right on time here for wrapping up. We really appreciate your um, half hour of your time here at this very, very busy time of year. We're not going away just because the webinar is ending. Please contact us if you have any questions, if you're interested in a, a forefront demo, if you have questions about the screeners, I'm going to encourage you to put those into the Facebook group, unless they're personal, you know, kind of things that you want to reach out to me personally about, that's fine. But if you, but because when you put them into that, that number sense Facebook group, then that question is answered for everyone who participates there. And so it's a great place um, for, for us to kind of have that kind of conversation. But uh, thank you very, very much once again for your time. And and we hope that you will all stay in touch.